Okay, so to get, we're going to run through direct traffic inside GA, uh, what causes it, what it actually is, and how you should deal with it. So my name is Tom Buckland, I'm the founder of HQSEO. If you have any questions about this presentation, please feel free to um, leave me a comment or contact us through the site. Okay, so obviously GA is incredibly powerful, useful, and for 99% of businesses, especially in our industry, it's indispensable. But if it sucks and it's not set up correctly, you have no idea what's going on. So a lot of the times we see clients say things like great numbers, guys, but what the fuck should we do with them, right? So in short, every site needs GA. If you don't have it set up already, please go and install it because the more data you can have over the past few months, even years, is really, really valuable. And that's the same for Search Console as well. So if you don't have those two, that's pretty much day one uh, implementation. If you don't know what you're doing, all you have is obviously a pile of numbers and numbers you can't really make any sense of. So it just looks too technical. There's too many stats and percentages and increases and decreases. Um, one of the most common parts of this is direct traffic. So that's the only thing we're going to go through today. If you have any other questions about analytics, again, feel free to get in touch. But we have to clear up direct traffic. Okay. So as you probably know, there's six types of traffic. Well, there could be a lot more than this, but there's six major types, and those are organic, direct referral, social, paid, and email, okay? Obviously, organic is everything from uh, a search engine, social, everything from a social media site, paid, obviously, email, if they've been emailed a link and they click through from that link, and then referral is any website. So if you have a link on Forbes, for example, and somebody clicks through from Forbes, Forbes would be the referrer, okay? But today we're gonna to focus on direct traffic. So obviously GA knows a hell of a lot more about the traffic coming into our site, but it still can't figure out certain visits. So every visit to your website that GA can't assign an origin or referrer is put inside one giant bucket called direct traffic, okay? Now it may as well be called everything else because a lot of the time it's not direct. Now, originally people thought direct meant direct to your site as in they typed in the URL, but in most cases, as you probably can guess, that's not as high a percentage as what usually direct traffic is coming in at like 10, 12% for most larger clients. So again, this is things like um, type in traffic, but again, that's only around 5% if not if that especially for smaller brands that don't have type in traffic if you do a lot of offline marketing then that could be the case but in most scenarios it's not and re realize that direct traffic is, isn't ghost traffic either so it will convert it will have good user experience metrics low bounce rates etc um, and it can even go as high as 40% in some cases sometimes people will bookmark your site and then we'll come back to it okay so that's very common if you have very long guides or really key information or data that people want to come back to at a future date, then that's going to be classed as direct traffic. Okay. And then if you have untagged web docs, so for example, you're in this example, we're talking about your latest service brochure because this is what we saw a client have a lot of, but it could also be anything that you've posted online that is a document format, not from a referral. Okay, so even Google Docs, for example, is going to act as direct traffic. Okay, then you've got things like HTTPS to HTTP. Um, again, something that you should have cleared up already. Buggy user side redirects or JavaScript redirects, not too common, but is something to keep note of if you see your direct traffic spiking. And <clears throat> broken, misfiring, or misattributed URL tracking codes. Okay, so if you're attributing things to direct traffic, but they should be from, say, a referrer, then you need to look into that and you need to get that solved. Okay, and then obviously you have things like dark social. So this is where untagged messenger apps come in. So things like WhatsApp is the most common one. So they're not counted as actual social traffic here because they're coming from secured sources and not from Facebook, Twitter, um, etc. Okay, so why should you care about direct traffic? Now, if you have a look here, this is a screenshot from a client, and you can see that this direct traffic conversion is actually a lot higher than the average for the client. So it can actually be just a better converting traffic 
because visitors are quite likely to be primed and already warm to the fact that you're offering a specific product or service. Um, and as a result, we shouldn't just ignore this. Okay. So in our experience, the direct traffic itself is actually a result of previous marketing. So usually it's indirect retargeting or even things like word of mouth. So if you go ahead and you go away and you give your business card to a hundred people in a, you know, a few months, then that's going to be direct traffic. And if you've made a good first impression, those are already going to be pre-sold on what you're offering. Okay. So a few keys here, not knowing the sources, not knowing what's working is obviously optimization issues. So that's something that's really important. You need to just distinguish where this direct traffic is actually coming from because if it's a very high percentage of your overall traffic you don't want to be let's say making marketing decisions based on a lack of data or misaligned data okay so you'd want every single visit to be tracked and attributed okay um, and don't let direct traffic frustrate you we just need to work towards minimizing it and splitting it up so for example if there are a lot of referrals coming in then we need to create unique tracking codes for those and say, okay, this code is going on our brochure for 2017, 18, 19. Okay. And if we're launching one next year, then we need to say, okay, this is 2020 or this is 2021, whatever it is. And just make sure it's very granularly split because you might have some people coming in from a previous source and they're actually coming in from incorrect information. Okay. And this is actually a massive opportunity. Because if you do this for things like YouTube and you do this for things like, let's say, I don't know, specific um, Google documents that you send to clients, you can actually see who's clicking and who's actually getting in touch. Whereas in most cases, you'll just have direct as a massive bucket and you won't know what's going on, which is obviously a missed opportunity. Okay. So obviously type in traffic, you can't really do much about this. Um, if they're typing it in, they're likely to know your brand already or have received an offline marketing piece. Um, bookmarks, again, same as the above. We ideally would have this data, but um, you know we don't live in an ideal world, so it's not the end of the world either. It's just something we need to keep an eye on. Okay. Next, you've got things like problematic redirects. So this is what we mentioned with the JS, incorrect SSL setups and meta refreshes, okay? So you can use JS re redirects sparingly and only when absolutely necessary. Um, and obviously we've got a little quote here, life is better with robust 301 redirects. And that's from a technical search point of view as well. So this, obviously this HTTPS to HTTP issue happens a lot when the secure host links to a non-secure destination. Okay, so this does not happen in any other scenario. This is things like mixed content as well can fall into this bracket. Um, the solution is easy. You just contact whoever is setting up your SSL or your HTTPS and just say, hey, what's going on? If you're unfamiliar with this, then there's a few good guides on mixed content online and those should be checked out. Okay, so obviously you want to remove this as a point of discussion. And then you've got tagging issues. This is actually my favorite, just because it makes things really granular. You can see what type of marketing is working, because even if you're running small campaigns where you know, you're sending direct mail to customers and they're coming back to your website, if you don't have this tracking set up, then you actually have no idea what's going on, if they're actually receiving it, if they're converting. Basically, you have no data or source of information about what's working, so you can't scale the marketing campaign itself if obviously you don't know if it's working or not. Okay, so this is an example of a UTM. So you can actually do this with Google's URL builder. Um, as you can see, we've got hqseo.co.uk, question mark, and then we've got this code in underneath. Okay, so you can see the example here, newsletter, medium, new uh, email, UTM campaign welcome. Okay, so now we have a very specific URL that we know 100% what or who has come from where okay and that's the most important thing um, you can track these and you can even use vanity urls or url sharpeners that point to the tagged url um, obviously because that url is not the nicest looking thing in the world um, and it could also be things like welcome or anything like that okay just make sure you get your link redirecting correct and these will still fire 
And then finally, we've got stubborn browsers that lose the referral data, okay? Um, this is really annoying because it just comes up as incorrect and it's honestly a bit of a pain to fix this. Um, we will have a detailed video tutorial for this soon um, and hopefully we can just help people redirect their actual traffic and show inside GA where it should be coming from, okay? But as, as we said, it's really difficult to fix and essentially there's nothing you can do here. Um, basically, it's back to segments and landing pages and using UTMs is the most important thing. Okay, so that's basically like a ground up approach. The full scale technical SEO audit can identify these issues that cause frequent direct traffic spikes. So problems with broken links, HTTPS issues, redirection issues, um, and then just get started with your one, okay? So there's a link in the description. We offer a technical SEO service if anyone is interested um, and feel free to get in touch. Okay, so Obviously, you are likely paying for your marketing campaigns, whether that's through an internal team or an external agency. Same for your SEO campaigns, but you really need to get this direct traffic sorted and you don't want it to blind your optimization efforts. And remember, minimize everything as much as possible um, and understand and exploit this direct traffic coming in, especially if it's a high percentage of your overall search. Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions. You can see my Twitter handle there as well. And cheers for watching. Bye.